Hi, hello everyone. I'm Marcel Roma Becerra, Management Information System student from NURSU. So today, I will be uh, going to discuss a three topics of MIS. So, first, expert system, transaction processing system, management information system. Okay, so, first, expert system. So, uh, in this video, we'll cover the following topics so, or objectives of this topic. So, in this uh, topic, we will learn what is the expert system, the main parts of the expert system, how do expert system work, some examples of their uses. So, okay, let's start. An expert system. So, expert system is a computer system that emulates the decision-making ability of a human expert. So, expert systems are designed to solve computer problems by reasoning through bodies of knowledge represented mainly as if then rule so that's it so what are the parts of expert system so first uh, the typical expert system consists solve first knowledge base so which is a collection of facts created from information provided by human expert it is a database design anyway to allow the storage and retrieval requirements of the expert system. Next, rules base. So, what is rules base? Rules base is a set of rules for making deductions from the data. This is made up of a series of inference rules represented as many as if then rules. So, these inference rules which closely follow human reasoning are rules by the inference engine to draw conclusion. So next, we have inference engine. So, inference engine, which acts like a search engine that applies inference rules in examining the knowledge base or information that measures uses query. It attempts to drive answers from the knowledge base using a form of reasoning. So that's inference engine. Next, user interface. So, it is the system that allows an expert user to query or question the expert system and to receive advice. And it also, user interface is designed to be as simple to use as possible. In the other hand, the inference engines may also include abilities for explanation. And last part of the expert system is explanation facility. So, here... Explain to a user the chain of reasoning, of reasoning used to arrive to a particular conclusion. Okay, now, how do expert systems work? So, first, the expert system must be fed its knowledge. So, here, where human experts contribute their information on a particular subject matter, which is programmed into the system. So, next information on the problem or the situation in hand is presented to the system. Though the, the user interface, a non-expert user can query or question the expert system by asking a question or by answering questions asked by the expert system. Okay, the expert system will take the data it has been given and applying it systems of rules. The inference engine uses the query to search the knowledge base and then provides an answer on some advice to the user. Okay, here are some expert system examples. So, examples of situations where expert system might be used. So, there are a lot of examples. We have car engine faults diagnosis, medical diagnosis, chess games, mm, we have plant identification, Animal identification, tax advice, careers advice and guidance, and insurance. So, there are a lot of examples. And then, from these examples, uh, I'll pick two examples to discuss and to understand more what is expert system. 
So, here, first example. Now, let's take a look at the first example, where car mechanics often use expert systems to diagnose faults with car engines. So, here, first, interactive user screen appears. Details of car type are entered. So, let's assume that this happened. Questions about engine problems are asked. So, what are the probability questions? Why is that? Uh, car has a problem and then onboard computer connected to expert system so as we all know there are some mechanical shop using uh, compute computer systems to detect what is the problem or what are the faults to the car or the from vehicle and then next what happened next answers to question engine problems are typed in so let's assume that in this part the answers from the first questions are provided so inference engine searches the knowledge base using rules base so here we come suggested prob probabilities of faults so are output in the form of a report to the mechanic or on screen report is displayed so that's the output or yeah, that's the output of the first problem. Now, second problem. We have here medical diagnosis. So, this is another example of situations where expert systems might be used. So, first, first step. Interactive user screen appears. Questions asked by the system. Symptoms and answers are typed in. So, expert system compares symptoms with those in the knowledge base using inference engine. And applying rules base, so uh, it's like uh, it's the same at the first example. So here we come, matches are found. So possible diagnosis and advice are output. So next topic is transaction processing system or TPS. So here we are. What is TPS? TPS is a system. To capture and process the detailed information necessary to update data on the fundamental operations of an organization. It also keeps track of basic activities and transactions of organization. So, TPS, it talks more about activities and transactions of an organization. Serve operational managers. Purpose is to answer routine questions and to track the flow of transactions through the organization. Examples, uh, inventory questions, granting credit to, to customers. So, actually, TPS examples also include systems that manage sales order entry, airline reservations, employee records, manufacturing, and shipping. It also monitors status of internal operations and firms' relationship with external environment and major producers of information for, for other systems. Highly central to business operations and functioning. So, that's it. So, here we come. So, there's a two ways to process transactions. So, first, batch processing system. Batch processing system is that transactions are accumulated over a period of time and processed as a single unit or batch. So, for example, Store may update its sales records every day after the store closes. So, what, uh, whatever the time period in batch system, there is some time delay between the actual event and the processing of the transaction to update the records of the organization. So, that's, proce that's batch processing. Next, real-time processing system. Transactions are processed immediately as they occur without any delay to accumulate transactions. So, it also referred to as Online Transaction Processing or OLTP. So, in this case, the records in the system always reflect the current status. So, uh, a good example of a real-time processing uh, system is that when you book uh, a ticket and select a seat, that booking is made right away and nobody else can get that some seat even a second later. So, any changes you make to your reservation are also updated in a real time. So, 
best example is ticket reservation for real-time processing system. So here, a payroll TPS. So there's a figure. So hope you can see this. So there's employee data, employee file, and employee information. Employee, some information about the employee. So a TPS for pay, payroll processing captures employee payment transaction data such as time card. System outputs include online and hard copy resorts, reports either for management and employee paychecks. So last topic. So our, our last topic is management information system or MIS. Provide middle managers with reports on firm's performance to monitor firm and help predict future performance. Summarize and report on basic operations using data from TPS. Provide weekly, monthly, annual results but may enable drilling down into daily or hourly data. Typically not very flexible systems with little analytic capability. So here how MIS obtain their data from TPS. So as we can see, TPS is connected or yeah, connected to MIS. So as we can see, transaction processing systems and then we have also management information systems. So from TPS it obtains to MIS. So as we can see, there's a reports, online displays and dashboards, and then managers. So here is a sample MIS report. So there's a figure. So as we can see, there's a product code, product description, sales region, actual sales plan, then actual versus plan. So this report showing summarized annual sales data was produced by the MIS in pre previous figure. So this is the summarized report of the previous figures. So now, what is the importance of MIS? So, it helps a company become more competitive. It reports and identifies what is working and what is not. These reports give owners the information they need to make decisions and improve the performance of their employees and the business. So, yeah, MIS, actually not only MIS, but... Uh, other type of information system is very helpful to the company or on our organization. So last, uh, what is the role of information systems in a business? So what does expert system, transaction processing system, and MIS uh, role to a business? Or how come these information systems helps, helps to a business? So, firms invest in information systems in order to, first, achieve operational, operational excellence. So, that's number one. One organization should have an excellence. Develop new products and services. Yeah, products and services are very important. And then, attain customer intimacy and service. Improve decision making. Yeah, in one company or organization, it should be have a good decision making. To be more competitive, promote competitive advantage, ensure survival. So that's it. That's the role of information systems in a business. Okay, I think that's all. Three topics done. Expert system, transaction processing system, and management information system. So thank you for watching and listening.